Welcome back guys to what is hopefully the first of a new series here on the channel called Lens on Japan, where every episode I'm joined by a creative professional to talk about their inspirations and their favorite places in Japan. So for the first episode, I'm joined by the fantastic, the lovely Lisa. <laughs> Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode, Lisa. Uh, where are we today and what are we doing? Well, we are in Shibuya. I'm always transiting through Shibuya to and from work. Um, and every time I come here, there's something interesting to shoot. I find something new every single time. So I thought, why don't we start the series here? Perfect, yeah. And we're just at uh, the Mark City Bridge right now, looking over the crossing. The lights just went green and all the little amps are crossing, <laughs> as you all well know, I'm sure, at home. So uh, yeah, not much time left in the day. So let's get started. Let's go. All right, so obviously not the best weather today, but that's the perfect excuse to do street photography. Yes, I find it sure you, don't, you don't need the sky, right? Not but, at all. Uh, what have you got planned for us over on the crossing? Um, what I'm thinking that we'll do over at the crossing is um, get a couple of long exposure photos, see what we can do with that. And then I'm also thinking of trying some panning photos. Um, which are notoriously extremely difficult. Bit tricky, yeah, I'll a bit tricky. Oh, crack. I had a, some success in Shinjuku a few weeks ago, so let's see if I can uh, replicate that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll put it on the screen. I, uh, I saw Lisa did a fantastic photo she posted on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was very good, but I think that's one of those rare ones. You really nailed it, right? Yeah, like uh, it's really hit and miss. Some days you get, <laughs> you know, you get that one shot that absolutely nails it, and sometimes you get. 800 photos that absolutely suck. That's it. You've got so many cars coming past here, taxis and stuff. So there's lots of great opportunities, but Go it's like... the flick of the wrist, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for episode one, you're really setting the bar high. Yeah. So let's get started. Let's do it. Well, there they go. The hordes, the swarm is moving. All right, what, what are you doing? I am shooting a long exposure okay. using this pole as support so I can do a really slow shutter speed. Oh, nice, nice. This is really handy to use this as support if you don't have a tripod. I hate tripods. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I try to use them as little as possible in street situations. Um, so I've got my shutter speed now at 1 over 10. I'm at aperture f14. Um, and we've got some movement in the photos, so it's kind of interesting to like introduce a dynamic to the photo. Um, that's just an option to have when you're here. Uh, how about these guys? All right, let's give it a crack. He's too slow. Maybe this guy here. Oh no. Not the bus. I think my favorite part of this whole thing is your stance. The, the power, the power stance. <laughs> it's all in the knees, right? <laughs> <laughs> G-Wagon, here we go. It's like a rap video. So we were trying to get some like car, car shots, but I think you actually got a couple of cool uh, shots of a guy on a bike. Yep. And uh, some like weird little mini buses and all that kind of stuff. That is true. I am drawn to people on bikes. I don't know why. If there's someone on a bike, <laughs> I'm going to take a photo of it. <laughs> All right, so I think this uh, awesome Doraemon statue is the perfect, the unconnected place to talk about gear. Let's do it. Let's talk about your cameras and stuff. So Let's do it. One thing I really like about your Sabli so is it's very, I don't know, I want to use the word like laid back or low key or like humble. You're not really into gear, are you? <laughs> like, I mean, like <laughs> if I was rich, I would be into gear. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> But I think, unfortunately, like photography is like a crazy expensive hobby to get into and it feels like it just gets more and more expensive as you go on. So I've made some like pretty decent investments. Um, I have a 24 to 70 2.8 and that's like my boss daddy lens that mm. was so expensive. Basically sold my car to buy that oh, lens damn. type okay. thing. <laughs> um, I also have my favorite lens in the whole world is this absolutely ratty, beat up 85 1.8. <laughs> That's not even for the Nikon Z. It's a, it's an F, like a Nikon F mount lens. So I have to put an adapter on, which makes it super heavy. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. um, But 
I mean, I could buy an 85Z, uh, but you know, life in Tokyo is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so. So this part of Shibuya underneath Mark City is really interesting. There's a lot of like ramen places and yakitori places. Um, I wanted to show you this place here on the corner. It's a yakitori place. Mm. Actually, one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken was taken here. It was a um, absolutely stunning spring afternoon, perfect golden hour. And I was over there walking towards up here. Um, the sun rays were coming down, mixing in with the smoke and there was a, she a chef sitting here having a break directly in the path of the light. <laughs> it was just perfect. Paka, so, mate, paka. One of my favorite photos. Sometimes I feel really nervous when I go out um, to do street photography just because um, I don't want to be obvious. Um, so a strategy that I have to be able to take street photos but to still stay kind of uh, like behind the scenes is to stand at like a T intersection. Um, and take photos of people who are walking by at the intersection. So, yeah, sneaky, yeah. right? Yeah, you just, yeah. Uh, you set the trap. Set the trap. And yep. wait, wait for the the, the the prey to come. <laughs> so I call them main characters. So I just wait for the main character to walk by. Oh, okay. I really like this area because there's the the Bitcoin shop <laughs> mm -hmm. with the the like it's being backlit by that shop there. So yeah, yeah. there's going to be quite a bit of contrast with the people who walk by. And there's also a lot of color. There's a lot going on there. So I think it makes for a pretty interesting composition. There's also taxis and bikes going by. So you kind of have like no shortage of things to take photos of in this particular area. Yeah, just walking past and very into this, this alleyway here. Mostly because of this, this chair, this very suspicious looking office chair. Dodgy. I think we could get like a good model shot in there. And then there's a cool like uh, Torikatsu sign, Tonkatsu at the back there. So I just thought the overall and then a sign that says, what the fuck is really going on? <laughs> Which is like what I think most of the time. And also this sign, I thought it said like arses, arses. But it's like arrests, arrests, arrests. Arres? Aries? <laughs> but I just assumed it was arses, arses. All right, if you are a street photographer that comes to Tokyo, then you undoubtedly know about this sign right here, this strip show sign. It's probably the most Instagrammable photo that you can take in um, this Dorgenzakia area. But honestly, I like it. I think it's interesting and I think you can get some pretty interesting compositions here. But you do have to be careful because there are some people who are around here don't really want to have their photo taken. So <laughs> best to maybe come not in, you know, in the depths of the night, come at sunset when people are still doing um, not so scandalous things. <laughs> yeah, it's probably one of the more, uh, or the, the, the less savory locations in, yeah, uh, in if Tokyo. You, if you go deeper in that way, it gets even less savory. <laughs> so I don't recommend taking photos in there. Yeah. This area is pretty safe though. The sad thing about this sign though, is it's like one of the very few actual neon signs in Shibuya still. Yeah, that's so true. Like most of them are just LEDs now. I never and even thought of that. You can't really see it right now, but when it gets to actual nighttime, the glow that this thing gives off is just magical. Yeah, this is really beautiful. I absolutely love this spot. And if you have like a car coming by, you can get the reflection yeah. of the sign on the car. Yeah, it's um, you can do some really interesting things here because you can play with that light and especially since it moves as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really cool place. Just I mean, it, it, is a, it is a strip show theater. So not the most PG of places yeah. to come. Yeah, be careful who you take photos of. But, but it's a cool sign. And you know, if you don't know Japanese, then uh, you'll just think it's nice and colorful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, one thing I wish wasn't the case, but it's really hard to find good graffiti in Japan, right? It's yeah, just, it's I not so. very, it's not very socially acceptable. Um, but I find like, you know, I guess like businesses like this, they probably commissioned someone to do that on the building. But you don't get people like sneaking into places in the middle of the night and just doing cool artwork and then just leaving you there. It's, uh, I don't yeah. know, it's, it's kind of sad because I feel like there's a lot of very interesting architecture in Japan, but like a lot of very bland looking buildings. Yeah. There's a lot of like blank that. space that you could probably do some pretty cool graffiti with. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't so frowned upon. <laughs> Super frowned upon. Don't do it. 
So if you've followed me for any period of time, you'll know that I'm obsessed with love hotels, mostly because I just think they're completely ridiculous. So right now we're in Love Hotel Hill, um, and we here we have a love hotel right next to a Shinto shrine. Uh, of course. A place of religious solitude, reflection. This is the perfect Japan juxtaposition. <laughs> You've got, you know, the weird, the crazy, the abstract, the unusual, and the kind of like fairy tale. Right. And then you have like the calm, quiet, <laughs> spiritual, secluded, sublime place. And I just feel yeah, like this yeah. is the perfect opportunity to see these together in the wild. For our final stop, we're on the roof of the Parco uh, department store, right? We are. This is one of my favorite places to come um, to try and see Mount Fuji for free um, because you can come up here for free. Unfortunately, we have a shocking day today, so there is no chance that we can see Fuji today. <laughs> so you'll just have to imagine it, um, but Fuji is out that way. True, yeah. I mean, I feel like Tokyo's got one of the best skylines in the world, so if we wait like a little half an hour, yeah. it'll be dark enough, we can get some uh, some city light night yeah. shots. Over that way you can see Shinjuku, so you can see the cocoon tower over there. Mm -hmm. um, and also Dokomo Tower is over there as well. Right, right. Um, so if you're lucky, I mean, if you think that there's going to be a nice sunset, I really recommend coming to the rooftop of Parco, just because you just get this absolutely unbelievable almost 360 degree view of Shibuya. Um, I feel like not many people know about this place to be honest, so now you know. Good tip, very nice. All right, so it's actually nighttime now. There's some awesome nighttime cityscape views. It's a little bit tricky up here because there are, there are these panels of glass, so there is some pretty gnarly reflection here. So you just have to get your lens as close as possible to the glass, or if you have like a lens skirt as well, that would be handy. Um, but in any event, um, up here is just absolutely incredible. You can see Tokyo Tower over here. You've got the whole Shibuya skyline. Um, it's one of my favorite places in the city. Okay guys, and that's the end of the very first episode of Lens on Japan. So thank you so much, Lisa, for joining me again today. My pleasure. <laughs> and do you have any parting words of advice for our lovely viewers at home? Yeah, I think the one thing that I hope that everybody can leave with is that, you know, street photography is so much fun. And especially mm. in a place like Tokyo, you'll find something interesting and absurd everywhere you go. Um, especially the absurd, which is my favorite thing to find. So <laughs> um, the next time you come to Shibuya and you have a camera, please go searching for that. Absolutely, yeah. So Shibuya is a place that you'll all probably come to when you visit Japan. Uh, and even if you've just got an iPhone in your pocket, there's definitely so many cool places, other than the regular places you might think of to go and take some cool photos. Mm -hmm. So I uh, hope you really enjoyed this video, guys. If there's anything you didn't like or really liked or want to see in the future on another episode of Lens in Japan, please let me know down in the comments. Please like this video if you did like it and uh, I'll see you guys next time. But also like I really truly believe that it isn't about the like the um, gear that you have. It's about the way that you use it. That sounds sexual. Delete that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's that. I'm keeping that for sure. That's the inspirational high point of the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the byline. <laughs>